Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 65 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series, where today we are working on Blood Magic, Ars Nouveau, getting ourselves uh, all kitted out in Ars Nouveau with a tier 2 book and some runes and all kinds of good stuff. So let's get started. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful day here in the world of the Andrada. Where today we're, you know, continuing on, as always, where we were left off uh, with things and stuff. Not too much done in between episodes. Really, all I did was this. Uh, so I set up a little itty bitty mini automation here for our god shards. It's not terribly anything too difficult. Um, and it still requires me to manually uh, create the new God Forged blocks and then break them. But this uh, this takes care of the uh, artifacting breakdown process. So let me go ahead and explain what happens here. Uh, also, I want to point out that I went ahead and made a lava sigil from Blood Magic because I got tired of having to go get lava and we don't have infinite lava set up just yet. Uh, so I went ahead and made this. But it's fairly inexpensive, just an alchemy array recipe of a lava reagent with a blank slate, slate gets you a lava sigil. Uh, and what this does, it generates lava. Now, uh, in my blood network, if we actually take a look at my divination signal, you're going to see I have zero LP in my blood network. Uh, so what does that mean for uh, the old, the Andrada? Well, that means anything that I do using my blood network is uh, actually going to damage me. It's going to take the blood from me. Not in from my network, literally straight from my uh, reservoir of life. So just something to keep in mind, but it is convenient to be able to refill this thing and generate lava uh, on a per need basis. Uh, I do want to go ahead and get set up infinite lava once we can get ender tanks going, which we probably could now, to be honest with you. Um, uh, once we get into uh, occultism just a little bit farther, really, we could honestly make this now. Like, th there's nothing stopping us. The kangaroo hide I can get set up. I need to get the kangaroo set up in our Drigmi farm. Uh, but once we have that, ender tanks are going to be easy to make uh, because that's all that it takes to do the thing. So, yeah, we'll get infinite lava set up very soon. But for now, this works. But anyway, so what I have is a mechanism tank going into a fluid encapsulator here. Um, and then the fluid encapsulator is set to have a configuration to pull from the top or input from the top, and it is auto input, so it does pull if needed. Uh, and then it's going to output to the left, and then it has an output to the back side um, for the uh, bucket, right? Uh, I don't, I don't think I have any god shards to spare. Otherwise, I could demonstrate this. I probably should have uh, done so. I just need two of these, please. We're just going to use two of these just to demonstrate how this works. Let me go ahead and make a Godforge block. As you can see, I've been farming all my stuff. So I pulled out some of those dusty mumby blocks and everything uh, or dusty mumby honeycombs from our bin downstairs. So we're good to go. All the rest of this can go into our system and we're good. We're about out of Nebu, though, so uh, something to be wary of. We're going to have to figure out Nebu. Uh, anyway, uh, so I need to go ahead and get my stuff out of my backpack because I put my hammer in here and look what we got. Geb's might. We're gonna see. We're gonna play with that very soon. Here, we'll talk about it in just a moment. But we're we're on a mission right now. So anyway, we break this. Bam! We get something out of it. We got Ra's fury. Flaming arrow ignites blocks and foes. Great. So what we have to do is go ahead and put this into this barrel. And I put a barrel here because you know once we start breaking like thirty blocks of God, thirty Godforge blocks, we're getting a lot of stuff. So it goes into the hopper and it goes into here. And you're gonna see what happened is there's a pipe set up in the back of this. It pulled the empty lava bucket out, routed it into the back of the fluid encapsulator, which filled it back up, which pushed it back into the Godforge block, which now has an empty lava bucket or a full lava bucket sitting here waiting to be processed. So then once it finishes and it's very slow, time in a bottle is uh, absolutely recommended. Bam. And what it does, there's a hopper sitting down here and it dumps these into the chest in which I can then go ahead and put them away. Uh, so I did put these in order based on JEI. So if we look at God shards, they are alphabetical order. So these are in alphabetical order. This doesn't have a uh, 
you know, there's only 15, not 16. So this is empty. Maybe we'll put like a blank Godforge block there. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, so we have, you know, 12, 6, 18, uh, varying amounts of God shards. I've been saving all of my Osiris and then all of my Horus because both of those are used in the future. Uh, specifically, Horus is used for creating the empty magical lamps from occultism. So we're going to need these when we get into... Um, like the dimensional mine shaft, which we're going to definitely do. And then there is the Osiris God shards, which are used, as we discussed prior, uh, to create spirited crystals. So Osiris God shard and uranium dust will create spirited crystals, and spirited crystals are used for uh, a lot of things in power, specifically the spirited capacitors, which allow us to make, you know, jetpacks and player transmitters and furnators and solar panels and all kinds of stuff. And uh, it allows us to make the... Um, the power things. Yeah, these things and these things and, and just things. OK, things from power. All right. That's where we're at. So anyway, we're going to say we're saving all of those. Uh, so that is that it took me all of this, by the way, 12, 6, 18, 25 to get the new it shards that we needed. I didn't get any until my last batch when I got two. Is it two? Yeah, two new it um, thingies. They're like uh, sickles. I believe, yeah, these things. I got Newit's Ire, I believe. I got two of them back to back, so I was able to get my Newit God Shards. And remember, we needed these because we need to make uh, Shadow Gems. And we're making Shadow Gems so that we can upgrade our Mage's Spellbook so then we can get into uh, Ars Nouveau and get ourselves some awesome blood magic -y stuff going with some, you know, blood. So, yeah, basically that's where we're at. So let's dive right in. So we're going to grab our new it God shards and we're going to make two of these shadow gems. I think uh, I do have some nocturnal power powder. I don't I got this out of a quest reward, I believe. So we're going to grab that. That's you. You we're going to need four essence of death. And then uh, two soul shards. And there we go. Now, uh, new it God shards. Are you used for anything else other than this craft? You are used for the mind shielding plate protects your knowledge. Does that make it so you don't lose experience? I'd have to look in the book, which is a lot of work. Other than that, though, new it shards are only used for these shadow gems. I think I was reading in the discord that like if we had a stack of shadow gems, that would be enough for the whole playthrough. So that's not where I wanted to go. Oh, we can come over here. Since I'm here, let's check out our little logistics. How are you doing? You have still not gotten one fish bone. So I'm just going to throw that out there. All of this, we have not gotten any fish bones. I don't know if we need to have this in a deep ocean or something, but yeah, no fish bones for us. Tons of fish, though. If we ever need fish for anything, we got it. I meant to go to my portals, though. And actually, I think I need to go home real quick. I think my blood orbs are in here. Uh, just my weak one, but I'm actually going to take the weak one. We're going to leave that in our altar. That way it can, uh, nope, that's the wrong spot again. That way we can refill our altar and, uh, refill our blood fairly easily. Right? Right. So we have, you know, 10,000 in here. So we're just going to pop this in here and then we're going to time in a bottle it. And I believe this will, there we go. This will fill up beyond the 5,000 we had before because our soul network has increased. No, I lied. Okay. It will not. Where is my apprentice orb, though? Like, oh, there it is. All I have to do is actually look. So if I put this in here now, it'll fill up. Okay, so the orb does determine how much essence you have in your soul network. So we should now have 10,000 in our soul network. What the cap is... I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's 10,000. Maybe it's 20,000. Maybe it's 500,000. Maybe it's 200 billion. Who knows? But not me. That's for sure. Uh, why no do thing? Knew it. Nocturnal. Two essence of death because I need to split the essence of death. No. Do you not like multi-crafting? No. Oh. Bam. There we go. Oh, that means I need more soul shards. Son of a gun. I only grabbed two. I should have grabbed four. 
I can't count, apparently. Well, that's okay. We'll come back. That, that's not a big deal. I'll come back and get that done. Uh, I do want to go ahead and stabby stabby myself with my sacrificial knife. We can throw our runa renewing down too, just so that we have it. Fill this up. Let's grab this so we get even more regen. Yeah, we're halfway there. Don't kill myself, though. Okay, cool. So we got our shadow gem. I like it. I have only eight sugar. I have no other. My diet consists of sugar. That's not a good diet at all, by the way. Uh, oh, I also made the uh, charged snowball, so I can grab those for this recipe here. Bam. Okay, so now we have the shadow gem. We should be able to upgrade our spell book. So let me go ahead and grab my novice spell book out of here. We can do this. We can do... Nope, not that recipe we can do this and we're going to request everything and it should fail to send that and that but now we have this and look we're a tier two spell book and then to upgrade you is okay so we would need to get hydrolux petals i'm assuming this comes from the end yeah better end forge and then stardust is going to be the bottleneck for getting our next tier okay cool that's what I wanted to know. Just just seeing where we were at. But now with this, we're going to be able to craft higher tier, um, well, spells. So we can actually use the tier two stuff that we're going to go create right now. So the glyph press is a pretty cool item. Uh, it is changed in 1.18. If uh, you happen to be playing on 1.18, the glyph press changed. Uh, there's now a table that you have to make that does all the stuff for you. But... Yeah, we're here. It's 1.16. We're not going to talk about 1.18 changes. We're going to play with 1.16. So what you do is you just throw your stuff in here. So, for example, I put my magic clay and I put my charged snowball in there. It's going to do its thing. It's going to press the clay and then it's going to go drop the paint on there. And there we go. We now have an amplify rune and we can go ahead and learn that. Right. What am I using this for? I'm using this for a ritual, or I mean for rune crafting. Yes, okay, so I can learn it. Uh, and then the same thing with our Marvelous Clay and our Clock. All we gotta do is this. And keep in mind that every rune that you unlock, you I believe it's 50 mana that you gain. So it's in your best interest to unlock as many runes. So right now we have 405, and we have 405. Okay, maybe I lied. I thought you were supposed to get more mana for every rune that you crafted. Maybe it caps out at some point. Because we did not gain anything from that one. And not rune that you craft, rune that you uh, use. Let's go ahead and check out how our Drigmies are doing, by the way. What's in here? Nothing. So everything is sorting out appropriately. One Wither Skeleton Skull. Okay. 14 Bone Blocks. Our uh, Bone Serpent, we got 14 Bone Blocks before it ended up dying. Maybe that's why it, uh, the Bone Blocks ended up in there, because it, it died. I don't know. Okay, so we can now cast tier two glyphs or lower, which means we can set up our own heal spell if we so desired. Uh, so like I want to do a self heal. And I don't know if it's amplify that I would want or extend time. What does that give me? That's just an immediate heal. Okay, so I think it's extend time that I would want on this thing. Let's do this. Maybe... Max this out, extend times. That's regeneration. Hmm, I want more regeneration. Maybe it did give me better regen. I can't tell because I, I think I need to wait for this to go away. Because this is the regeneration that the cookie gave us in order to see if this will give me regen six. Let's go ahead and add extend time on this so that way it lasts a little longer and maybe two of them and then we just got to wait five seconds and see what this spell now does for us okay now if i cast this bam regen five i think that's pretty decent like if i were to get my sacrificial knife out and that's for how long it was like 10 seconds like that's keeping up I'm spam clicking and we're, we're doing pretty darn good. Maybe we can even do a little less. We can extend time that way. I don't have to keep casting it. And this is probably going to get us regen four. Nope. Still regen five. 
I guess let's see how many extend times I can add before it drops down to regen four. But yeah, I like it. Okay, and bam. Still regen five, almost 30 seconds, okay. Does one amplify get us regen five? I don't know. We're gonna extend the time again. We're also gonna call this heal. Or let's call this, we'll call this regen, because it's technically, I mean, it is a heal, but it's kind of sort of not. It's a regeneration. It's not an immediate heal. Oh, also, I figured out what the B was for. Someone commented uh, for re resourceful bees for National Bee Day. Uh, added the little bee that follows around you for the next like five days or so. So I think it ends on the 23rd or something like that. Okay, so regen four. So that's our cap. So we want to have one amplify, four extend times, and that's the best we can do for a self heal max regen and most time that we can extend on there now there is increased um amplifies and this is new if we look at ours amplify there is an amplify tier two which uses a shadow gem and i imagine that this is like a boosted version of amplify that way you can uh have you know we could replace our amplifies with those and get more extend times and there may even be like an extend time tier two no I'm going to add the Amplify Tier 2 to our to-do list because we'll see how it is. Okay, so that is step one. We have our spell. Now we need to go ahead and get a rune set up so we can actually, you know, kind of sort of automate this. So we step onto it, it heals us, and then we move on from there. So what we need to do is get some Archwood Slabs. Bam. We need to get any sort of Archwood. No. Oh, it actually can use any of the woods. It doesn't need to be the, or any of the logs. It doesn't need to be the wood. So there's a scribe's table. We also need to get a spell parchment, which is going to be a blank parchment, which is going to require some mana fiber or mana bloom. I don't, yeah, mana fibers from Batania. We should have a mage bloom. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, mage bloom. And there's some ginger and cumin, by the way. Oh, I planted ginger and cumin because it's part of our cooking process too. Yeah. Uh, and then Mage Bloom gets crafted into Mage Bloom Fiber with some Silk Fiber or is part of the Silk Charm process. And that's about it. Okay. So let's go grab some Silkworm. Silk. You like that 360 there? Throw all this into here. And... Bob's your uncle. So now we should be able to do this. And we'll request like 10 of them. Oh, I didn't make the fiber. I just threw the mage bloom in there. This is what I need. As much as we can. There we go. And blank parchment. Now we can do this. We should be able to clear out 10 of these. Bam. And we can turn that into a spell parchment with some source gems. And then lastly, uh, we need to make ourselves some runic chalk, which we should be able to do. Oh, I used all my mage bloom fiber. Quest another 10. Just make us have some spares. And now we should be good. OK, so we don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. I'm going to keep that because we're going to need another shadow gem. I need to get two more soul crystals. Or soul shards. And we're good to go. Okay. So now we need to get our uh, scribe table set up. And this is kind of our de facto R's area. So we'll set this up over yonder. And then all we have to do is uh, figure out how this works. So it can be inscribed with the spell at the table. And I believe all we have to do is shift right click. Yes. So you choose your spell in your book. You shift right click. And now that is set with the spell. So this is self heal, amplify times four, extend time times four. Okay. So then lastly, all we have to do is this and this runes must have touch as their first glyph. Okay. So we need to change this from self. That makes sense. Nope. It's the wrong book. So we need to change this from self to touch because it's going to do it to whatever touches it. We're going to Shift right click, set that. We're going to change it back to self. So that way we always have this available to us. And there we go. So now if I walk over this, 
boop, we should get regeneration five. And then as long as I'm standing on this, we're gonna it's gonna keep renewing. However, it is gonna use source. As you can see, it is pulling from our source jars, though they're getting refilled pretty quickly. Um, and then we can just break this and get rid of it if needed. So what do I need to do? Well, I need some source. So we're gonna grab our corner jars here. We're gonna bring these with us. Thank you, my friend. Head on over to our portals, hop on in here. And with this being done, that now means that I no longer have to have this whole setup here uh, because I don't need to have, I don't need to sacrifice anything. I'm, I'm, I'm sacrificing myself. So we're gonna take our runic chalk and I'm gonna put it here because I'm generally gonna stand here with crafting and I don't always want this to activate. So I'm gonna put it over here. That way I don't have to be over here. Grab my source jars and we're gonna set one down. We're gonna see how much this costs, okay? So if I do this once, bam, that costs 1%. So we're gonna be able to do this 100 times per source jar. That's actually pretty darn good. I may not even bring this second source jar over here, but I'm going to because uh, it looks better. And I'm actually going to set this up on both sides so I can go either way because, you know, symmetry, it looks better this way. So now if I want to stab rate myself, all I got to do is just, you know, walk over here and then stamp, 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 And we're good. Look, we're already at 10 buckets. I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about it. I can even eat and it'll help even better. Bam. I like it. It's a great setup. And... Again, 98%, so it is very minimal source usage here. And yeah, that's basically uh, automating this with, with uh, well, not automating, but making it easier with blood magic. So now we can tear this whole thing down. I can grab that, bring that back with me. And there we go. Look at this. Now it looks all nice and neat here. We don't have to worry about it. When we get to our higher tiers, I can go ahead and set that up. I can actually go ahead and plan for the higher tiers now if I so desired. Um, let's just grab some deep soil from here. I could actually set this up to match the higher tier of books. Um, I believe in this pack, in uh six or expert i mean uh we're going to need uh slates i believe we do need these ethereal slates uh which is a tier five altar and it is literally only used to craft these right yes these are used for ultimate control circuits uh they are used to craft the iridescent altar it looks like and to craft automated iridescent altar starlight input port that's kind of cool actually we can automate this I like that. But yes, we need ethereal slates, uh, which is a demonic slate leveled up, which is all the way. So we're going to end up ultimately making a tier five altar. So I can plan for that now. If I can find my Akashic Tome, we could set this up so that uh, we can see what this is going to look like ultimately at tier five. 108 total runes, 52 more than tier four, 13 on each side. That is a lot of runes. Also requires some beacons in the corner. I actually do have a wandering trader that sells beacons. I think I bought a beacon from a wandering trader. I don't know if I still have that wandering trader though. So basically we need to have it like here, but I have to place it with a block. So let's do, uh, I'm going to right click and it's going to place it there. So if I place this here, is that correct? Kind of close enough. Yeah, that would be close enough because our, our um, beacons could sit here. And yeah, so I would just need to clear this out and then place all of these. So what I would do is I would place placeholder runes i would just get like some stone brick or something like that excuse me gross i'll get stone bricks or something like that to take the place of these runes i would fill this out and then you know get this get, get it built up so that our tier two is sitting up here and then we can just expand as we go around so i'm going to work on doing that in between episodes here um yeah i like the look of this 
and then we can come in here we can come up and then if i really wanted to i could clear out this area a little bit and we could set the incense altar up over here so i can come over here and the incense altar will make it so that when i do stabberate myself i get more bang for my buck because eventually we're going to need like the ethereal slate uh recipe is what two hundred thousand lp per ethereal slate that's a lot of LP. So we're gonna have to figure out how to store this. I believe we can pipe, pump this out into like jars or stuff or like, a, what are those called? From industrial foregoing, black hole tanks. We can pump it out into black hole tanks and pump it back in as needed when we need to craft and stuff. Because there's no way, even with like a capacity runes, like if we were to have all capacity runes, I don't think that we'd ever hold 200,000 inside of this thing in the first place, so uh yeah but yeah that's that's blood magic we're, we're fairly squared away in that regard at the moment at least so yeah what's our next step so we came down this path we got this we came down this path we're at a tier two we do need to get into the soul snares uh again my most favorite part of this and i probably should have just left my spawner set up if i was going to do this um, but this is mage bloom fiber inside of our blood altar and that will get us soul snares and eventually we won't need to do this we can use like a sacrifice or not the sacrificial we can use um these guys sentient swords but that is going to require a forgotten sword we got that we have those ingots a petty tartaric gem a rune of helheim from mythic botany yeah we have not done any Batania. An Eznium ingot from Occultism. Yeah, so we got a little while to go before we can get to a Sentient Sword. So we're going to be soul snaring it up for a while, it looks like. What? I'm trying to press the button. Yay me. Jeez Louise. Uh, so yeah, anyway. We'll get back to that. That That's a, that's a progress project for another day. But blood magic is taken care of. We can go ahead and work on, you know, coming down this path now for our nature's aura. And it kind of seems like this is going to be like our mm, stopping area, essentially, for all of this uh, until we can move on into other areas. But what my next big goal that I want to work on is getting the um, refined storage and occultism storage set up. I'm tired of having to deal with this. I'm tired of having to deal with drawers. I want to get all of that set up and it's going to require a little bit of work. We're going to have to, uh, you know, do some do some work with it because we're going to have to up our power gen. We're going to have to figure out our best ways to do so. I mean, coal can only take us so far, right? So we're going to have to get power gen taken care of. And there's been quite a few suggestions in the comments and in the discord. And one of them is solar panels from uh power these generate 880 rf per tick it was recommended to me before to you gen or to use the um well i didn't bookmark it apparently anyway from power the uh, thermo generator however solar panels are 880 rf per tick is pretty darn good i'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there and they operate i mean the only caveat with these is they only operate during the daytime so you gotta you know you gotta deal with daytime usage uh, and it apparently requires these crystal glass panes, which is crystal glass, which is ghostly glass and corundum. And I still have not gotten corundum taken care of. What I need to do is go find corundum. I think that's going to be my best option is to go out into the world, find corundum. Or, I mean, yeah, uh, we could do Batania, but, you know, we're not there yet. We kind of are. We could. I'm just... I love magic mods and everything, but at the same time, I could have got a free scribes table. You kidding me? You kidding me, Charles? Um, yeah, not that it's a bad thing or anything like it's fine. It's fine. We'll get into it eventually. We're going to have to just collecting all my rewards. OK, I think my next goal is to go into here and we're gonna work on getting these guys. It is gonna require me to do the Petty Tartaric Gem route, take 16 will to make each one of these. And I think we can have like a cap of nine of these. So I'm probably gonna wanna just make nine of them just to have it. This is gonna require the Corundum. So we're gonna have to get the Corundum part taken care of. And this is a book of binding Ginny, which is not terribly too difficult to make. Uh, and apparently there's an otherworldly bee too. Sacrifice of the Rocky Bee, the Otherworldly Bee, may be bound to this plane. Ritual Sacrifice of the Rocky Bee. I don't know what that means. I'll look in the Beepedia, but we'll get there. 
Okay, so yeah, I want to go this route, and then we need to get the storage stabilizers, which is going to require even more stuff and things, other stone petals, bronze blocks, uh, glyph of access ender inventory. This is easy. All of this is easy. These runes are fairly easy to make because we have... Um, are they easy? Can it use rainbow runes? Any sort of runes. Because we have the RGB honeycombs. Those generate runes. If you break these down, you get rainbow runes as a 5% chance. So that, I think those will count as a rune for this process. So then we need these things. We need a lot of stuff. I honestly have no idea how this stuff works, too. Dimensional storage stabilizers, stabilizer other actuators. The more stable your connection up to six stabilizers can be added to any one actuator. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's it's for another episode. We'll learn. We'll learn together. Anyway, uh, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it, and it really does help out the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.